Mike the Vegas Guy coming to you with another hotel review for you and today I am bringing you along with me for my three night stay at the Link Hotel and Casino. This is the property that was formerly the Imperial Palace now owned by Caesars Entertainment and known as the Link adjacent to the Link Promenade Shops. <laughs> Okay, stop the tape. I've got to interrupt here. I'm going to do things a little differently in this video. I know you've probably seen the thumbnail already and you've read the title and you know that this might not be the most favorable review. I figured I'll give you a little TLDR and give you a little summary of this video right up front so you know what you're getting yourself into. Then following this will be my room tour, my usual resort review, and a lengthy explanation uh, of me just talking on camera while I was staying at the link in real time, telling you my story of how my weekend went. The basic things you need to know, the link no longer has valet parking. If you are not someone who's going to drive yourself to this hotel if you're staying there, it probably doesn't apply to you. But other guests, that means a lot to drop off your bags, to pull right up to the front door, to walk in and check in. I go in length about that situation. I had a weird series of events transpire on the night that I checked in. The Link was outsourcing their security staff that weekend, and the people they hired were not so knowledgeable about the property, so that made for some difficulties. You'll hear me talk at length about the age of the property and the age of the current remodel that happened closer to a decade ago now. The Link is not a terrible place to stay, the rooms are still clean. The Caesars brand is pretty much reliable when it comes to staying at a nice hotel, but this is certainly starting to feel like the lower budget option in the Caesars portfolio. If you wish to hear me go in full detail about that, just continue watching this video. I hope you'll hit that like button. It would really help out my channel. And please hit the subscribe button if you like seeing these hotel reviews from me. So without any further ado, let's cut back to a slightly grumpier me when I had just checked into the link for my three night stay. Welcome to the link. Here is my room. This is a luxury king suite or luxury king room that's not really a suite but for the link this might as well be a suite these are tiny rooms at what was once upon a time the imperial palace um i got checked in that was a whole ordeal um more on that later but here's a look at the room it has a bed it has this cabinet. They make really good use of the space with these counters. So I have stayed at the link before. I've stayed in a regular room. A normal room is just about as wide as you see here without this partition, without that little living room area. They usually have some... So picture where this little living room area is would normally be the bathroom in a normal room here. So this is the normal size of one room. Basically what they've done to make this little like junior suite type of room, they've put the bathroom in what would once once upon a time was the adjacent room, I assume. And there's another room on the other side where this wall angles out. There's an adjacent room here. This is the strangest part. Look out the window. And out this window, there's the room next door. It angles out these little alcoves. Uh, this has always been an odd hotel. This was always one of the more lower end value hotels in town before, before Caesars bought this and it became the link after it was the Imperial Palace. Um, before then, it was these were very cheap rooms. You could get uh, a weekend here. This is, and it still kind of is the place for college kids, first timers, partiers here for the weekend for a, a low budget hotel. They certainly charge more now. This is not uh, necessarily the the cheapest hotel in the Caesars portfolio, but it's still considered one of the value ones. They have these nightstands. They do have this pretty cool 
charging station. I tried it out. That little, uh, that is a wireless charger port. You can just put your phone up against and it does work. And of course they have some regular USB, USB-C it looks like. Um, and some regular outlets. They got outlets everywhere. Could you see some staining? There's some weird, these look like, I don't know, nail polish or something. They don't come off. There are some stains. There is a closet here. Gosh, I'm seeing more just like strange. That's on there. That is um, great. Um, this is weird. I can barely fit between. That's how close I, I can't walk. You can't stand in front of this closet between the bed and open the doors at the same time. Uh, so their other rooms have like a modular little built-in shelf thing instead of a closet like this. I guess this is considered for the luxury. Okay, just a blank. Uh, leave the safe, safe instructions. There's a safe. You got some drawers. If you are a person who actually uses drawers when you stay at a hotel, please tell me in the comments. I've never met a single soul who opens the drawers and puts their belongings in a drawer in the hotel. Um, what's that like? These are drawers. They don't have handles. Uh, phone. My phone didn't work when I stayed at the Rio. Let's see, it's a cordless phone. Huh. Hello. I think the cordless part is out, out of battery. My God. So it's a cordless phone that's not charging properly. Fantastic. But the phone does work. I, I guess I can use it on speakerphone, which is a step up from when I was at the Rio, and the phone didn't work at all. Okay, so more space than your average room at the link, but it is still close quarters. They do some really smart things. This little ledge slash desk below the television becomes a desk, becomes a little place to hold the remote, um, and then leaves a lot of room left in the room. How you doing? Um, Old-fashioned air conditioner heater. Uh, I did discover though that it is remote control so you can control it here on the old-fashioned touchpad and around this corner there is a more modern wall unit um, and I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to crank it as low as it'll go because it's hot outside and I want this room to be as cold as possible. So nice little um, living room area, a little coffee table, some artwork and a TV. There are two TVs. So, um, I did book this room. It was a luxury suite. It's better than the picture on the website. I'll see if I can put that up for you right now. The image that they show does not show a couch and a living room area. It does just show, it actually shows like an armchair. It does show the bathroom being off, off of that. And there's this barn door. And let's uh, take a look at that now. So behind this nice mirror, very nice Florida ceiling mirror almost, sliding barn door, is a very large bathroom, at least for the link standards. This is pretty standard for the Caesars properties, similar to the Flamingo setup with these uh, dispensers. Of course, when I stayed at the Flamingo, the dispensers were not functional. This one's got some Soap leaking out of the sides, crusted over. 
but uh, soap does that. Hopefully it's pretty good soap. Uh, beats uh, the ones that were just completely dismantled and not working. And a stand-up shower. We've got shampoo, conditioner, and a label maker corrected that to say body wash. What did I used to say? It used to say, I don't know if you can read it on the camera. It, oh, it's a conditioner. So they took an old conditioner <laughs> uh, one and changed it to body wash. Looks like a pretty nice shower head and a nice little shelf there. That's not bad. We'll see tomorrow how it works. And of course, and I hate this, the passion. Shower curtain, when you install the very nice glass shower, you just didn't want to pull the trigger on uh, a door. I don't like that. I hate shower curtains. Um, this is one thing I don't like. This is a broken light that should be illuminating this dark corner of the room. Uh, if I didn't say it already, I turned on every light in this room. This is a dark room. This corner with the TV in it, this is the only light source. I thought maybe there I would find other light switches that activate other lights. This is a very dark little corner. There's that one little window and um, the, uh, the lights there on the side of the bed. It's, it's kind of a dark room. So if you're one of those seasonal affective disorder folks who needs a lot of sunlight, you might not want to stay at the link. It's very strange. But this is my first glance at the room. We got the air conditioner going. At least I will say these old machines do a pretty damn good job usually. It should uh, be an ice cold room, I would hope, uh, by this evening. But we'll see. Just the strangest view. We got a nice view of the uh, flamingo habitat over there peeking through the buildings and more so the roofs of the um, the link and the promenade shops there. I'm almost basically just across the way from where I <laughs> where my room was the last time uh, in my last review. So there's a view over at the Flamingo. Um, they didn't advertise the view. They did not make any promises of the view when you book online, just the type of room. So I, I got a little luxury suite here. I'm looking forward to it. We will see how it goes. We'll check in. Okay, it is my first morning here at the link. This is, I'm just gonna talk here. This is gonna be the talking portion. Just gonna give you a bunch of thoughts, gonna explain to you what happened last night. Um, I, I am not enjoying my stay here. I kind of, kind of hate it, um, if I'm being honest. So first things first, I am a Diamond member with Caesars. I am staying here this weekend on a comp room offer that I received being a Diamond player with Caesars. And uh, some people commented, I guess I should explain, just so you understand, if you're not aware, Caesars Entertainment owns about half of the hotels on the Strip. Caesars Entertainment and MGM Entertainment are basically the two companies that run most of the Las Vegas Strip resorts that you're familiar with. So I like to do my gambling with Caesars. They used to have some really great promotions. They've been cutting back on their uh, perks for their players but they have made it a lot easier to get status with them, so I do still play, and it's worth its weight in free rooms. When you become a Diamond member, you don't have to pay resort fees. You can get free room offers if you are not a, a heavy player, but you will still have to pay resort fees when you stay on those free room offers. But So when you make Diamond, a free room offer is actually a free room, and that's worth it to me. But one of the other big perks Ever since hotels started charging for parking, and now pretty much every hotel on the Strip, except for Circus Circus and Treasure Island, everyone else charges. And something that was also always free was valet parking. You never paid to park your car, whether you were self-parking or valet parking. 
Now, when you are staying at a hotel, the ability to valet park your car is really convenient. You just pull up to the front door, you're able to unload your bags. If you wanna use a, a bellhop, the bell desk to help you with your bags, you can. Um, otherwise, you just stroll right into the front door, someone takes your car, and you don't think about that. For me, that's one of the biggest perks uh, when I have my little staycations here. Also, as a local, it's convenient to have free parking. So I booked this free room offer for this weekend here at the link. I'm going to a show tonight at Brooklyn Bowl, and I wanted to just make a weekend out of it. I was looking forward to this concert, so I said, let me stay at the link right next door. Of course, also, I'm trying to make you know, videos and review things for you on this channel. I already reviewed the Flamingo next door. So there's only two hotels adjacent to the Lake Promenade where Brooklyn Bowl is. So I decided to stay here. Now I have stayed here before. I stayed here, it was before the pandemic. So it's been a while. I'm trying to remember the last time I, I came here and used the valet. It was certainly more recently. At some point I went to see Matt Franco. I've come here to other like events like at the Jimmy Kimmel's Comedy Club and I've, I've parked at the link. So it was a surprise to me when I pulled up today and there's no more valet parking. Now mind you, all of the property signage still indicates that there is valet parking for the link hotel. I followed the signs because sometimes they've, they've moved it. It's been a few years. I, I wasn't sure if maybe they had it in a different location. That actually happened to me the last time I stayed at Flamingo. They moved it from where I was used to it being. They swapped the rideshare pickup with the valet. So I was following the signs. I pulled in and it is so convoluted. I'll get into that later. I mean, this property is laid out ridiculously. It was It's always been a strange setup, particularly their parking garage, which has to reside behind the building it's built over a flood path. It's the Flamingo Wash. If you can't picture the Link Garage and maybe you've never been here before, you may have actually seen it on the news once upon a time because every time we have a monsoon and there's actual flash flooding in town, this is a legitimate flood path and the entire Link parking garage becomes flooded. And there's usually shots of it on the news it's, it's designed to do that, it's, it's intentional. But because it was designed for that, they had to build around the wash. It's a very strange parking garage. And you have to drive through it, you have to drive under that parking garage to get to what used to be the valet, which is at the front of the property. It's almost at the street, at the strip, but it's blocked off, it's behind the carnival court in between Link and Harrods. And it used to be really convenient. That's right where the hotel check-in is. So if you got your car dropped off there and you took your luggage right in that door, you would check in, you'd be in a great spot. It used to be super convenient. I, I actually really enjoyed my last stay here a few years back. So here's what happened. So here's the confusion that happened. I pull up until you get to that point where you actually reach the front door, all of the signage indicates that the link still has valet parking. When you pull up to where you're, it still says valet lane, and you pull up into that lane, there are suddenly these signs that say, um, valet drop off at Harrah's, baggage drop off only, no standing, no waiting. Um, so this is basically turned into a taxi line and a drop-off line. Now there were several other cars parked there, seemingly waiting for a valet to come out. Now here's where it gets more into a criticism. Like, look, I can accept if they don't want to have valet at this hotel anymore, but fine, do it, but advertise it take down the signs indicating that you should drive all this way through their garage to get to a valet parking area. They haven't done that. Secondly, they don't have staff at that door. So there were several cars doing that. So I pull up and now there's people honking their horns, there's other cars, taxis trying to get through. It is a very narrow, very small space. There's only like, there, there are technically three lanes wide, but they're narrow lanes too. At other hotels, that would be only be two lanes. 
So there's a car parked next to me. The driver literally waves at me and asks me, like, are you waiting for a valet? What's going on? I don't know. All of us are clueless. Finally, a security guard on a bicycle drives by. He comes up to me and says, hi, what are you waiting for? I tell him, is there no more valet? He goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't do that anymore. You got to park in the garage. I don't want to park in the garage, but more specifically, I don't want to park in the garage and have to lug all my bags through the casino out back backwards to the front door. So he also offers the option of valeting my car at Harrah's. Now I found out later, you can valet at Harrah's and you can pick it up at the link. So I asked the security guard, I said, what about my bags? I don't want to lug my bags. I'll go park in the garage or I'll valet at Harris if I have to, but you know, he says, oh yeah, well, we'll have someone from the bell desk come out. Well, there, there was no bell staff out there. Uh, the signage did say bag drop off. So I said, sure. And so this security guy, great guy, he was really helpful. He says, hold on one second, I'll go make sure he drives away on his bicycle. He pulls back around after a minute, not even a minute, real fast. And he says, he points to me, there's a guy in a blue polo shirt. He says, that guy's gonna come. Uh, he's, he's from the bell desk. He'll come get your bags. We'll hook you up. Don't worry about it. So I was gonna, okay, fine. I watched that guy disappear into a side door back into the building. And then he comes out uh, with one of those luggage carts. Mind you, I'm still parked here. There are still cars honking their horns. Uh, there's, there's a few of us who are parked here and in the way and the taxis, don't piss off the taxis in this town. I see him come out with the luggage cart and he goes to another car that's parked there. And there's, there's three of us who are parked there. And this car had like a bunch of people with a ton of luggage. I'm just me by myself. I have one suitcase, suitcase and a backpack. I said, screw it, I'll go, I'll go to the garage. So what I did was go to the garage, which is at least closer than if I went to Harrah's. I trudged through the casino with my luggage to check in. Later on, I went and moved my car from the garage to the Harrah's valet, and hopefully uh, that won't be an issue uh, going forward. So that was how I started my trip. Things continued to be a little weird in the first hour I was here. Now, first and foremost, I just wanted to find out from a staff member, uh, when did they get rid of valet? What's the status of that? Why are the signs all still there, yet they don't have it? And at, at first, I was also trying to confirm that I could valet at Harris and have my car picked up at Link. And not everyone could confirm that for me. So when I went to check in, I go to the diamond check-in area. It's always convenient. You know, there was no one in line. It was really great. The woman who checked me in was really great. I asked her about the valet and she says, oh, um, I only started working here a few months ago. As far as I know, they've never had valet. And I'm like, there's signs everywhere saying they have valet. Why is that? But okay, whatever. So I go up to my room, do my little room tour you saw already. I unpack, settle into the room, and I go, okay, I gotta go move my car. I'm still trying to confirm that I'll be able to pick it up. I find a security guard. There's a security guard out by the elevators directing traffic. It was very crowded. It was a Friday night in Vegas. People are checking in. There was a Raiders game, super crowded. I try to confirm with this security guard about the parking situation. And he goes, oh no, you can't valet at Harris. You want to valet? He, he didn't know that there wasn't valet parking here. This security guard didn't know. Then I notice he's not wearing a Caesars Entertainment or Link uniform. He's wearing this generic kind of yellow security guard costume, costume. And it just says event staff on the back of his shirt. And meanwhile, I'm kind of frustrated by everything that's gone on with my car and, and not knowing what's going on. And I'm trying to get information from people. And now I've got the security guard who kind of looks like he doesn't actually work here. It was strange. This was heading back to the garage. So between the casino and the garage, every security guard I saw was wearing this same kind of uniform, not a Caesars Entertainment 
uh, name badge uniform. So I just say, screw it. Without getting the information, I go over to Harris. I take my car, I drop my car at the valet. The valet says, yeah, no problem. We'll drop it off with a link for you. You just call it there. Great, I got the answer from him. Pro tip, if you really want correct information, go to the specific department of the thing you want information about, even though it's very tempting when you're at a resort like this to just ask any random staff member, ask a slot attendant for directions to the buffet, etc. There are so many employees at these resorts, thousands of employees per resort in many instances. They do not always know what the other departments are about. So don't be surprised if you ask a question to some random staff member and they shrug their shoulders and tell you, I don't know. Don't take it out on them. It's really not their fault. They're not trained on another department's uh, way of doing business. It's always worth a shot. Usually front desk or security people are very knowledgeable about the whole place. So, But when someone doesn't know the answer and then you realize they don't exactly work here, that was strange. So I walk through Harrah's, I walk back. I actually walked out to the Strip and went over to Caesar's Palace last night. The second I get into Harrah's, they have security guards wearing Harris uniforms with Caesars Entertainment name badges. I go up to the guy and I go, hey, I'm staying next door at the link. Do they have different security? What's going on? He had no idea. So as of today, as of my first morning, I still don't have an answer about this outsourced security staff. I've established enough that they, they are real security staff. They do work here, but it seems like the link has outsourced them to another company, so they might these might be staffers who float around at different properties in Vegas. So these security staffers that were here, at least last night, were not as knowledgeable of the property as you would expect a staff member inside a hotel to be. So I realize uh, if you've never been here, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it might not be something that concerns you, but I was kind of having like a, a see something, say something kind of moment where I was like, this is a guy just dressed like a security guard, but doesn't seem to be an official employee of this building. Um, it apparently is legitimate, but kind of scared me, kind of freaked me out, especially when I was like, I don't know where to leave my car. I don't like this parking garage. Um, it was strange. So anyway, that was my first night, my check-in experience. It was very strange, kind of put me in a weird mood. And there have just been some little things that keep happening that seem to point out that this property in particular is not the best well-kept property in the Caesars portfolio. This really does seem to be a resort for younger people. If you uh, just turned 21, if you're turning 21 on the second day, of your Vegas weekend. Um, this this is the property for you. It's a good starter hotel. The closer I've looked at this room uh, this morning, there's a lot of scratches and dings. I mean, it's not like things are broken and not working, except that there's that one light in the ceiling of the bathroom that's not working, but just little dings in the paint and scratches on the walls and things. This remodel happened over a decade ago the rebrand uh, from Imperial Palace to the Link, it was actually the quad for a couple years there while they were building the high roller wheel and finishing the Link promenade shops outside. That was, that was under construction, I was here in 2011 and the rebrand into the Link happened around there. So this is at least a 10 year old remodel and it is starting to feel old. When I was here, it had to have been 2018, I mean, so five, six years ago at least. It felt a lot newer and fresher back then. You know, this place kind of feels like a college dormitory. And it's kind of, I assume that's why they originally tried to rebrand it as The Quad, but I think they, uh, they realized that most college students are under 21 and probably shouldn't, we shouldn't be marketing to them. Good idea. But if they had named this place The Quad, it would make a lot more sense because it really does kind of feel like, you know, a lot of these more modern, like, hostel type uh, hotel spaces. Very efficient use of space. The rooms are small. You know, people do um, 
make fun of this whole conversion to kind of the Ikea furniture style of hotel rooms. As far as Vegas goes, this hotel, now that I think about it, kind of pioneered that because they had to due to these rooms being so small at this property. They were the first in my memory, if not one of the first, to convert their bathrooms and their rooms to stand up showers because it made for a better use of space. Now, almost every hotel room in town has converted to a stand up shower and gotten rid of the shower tub combinations. So, you know, 10 years ago, this place felt like a really cool, new, modern vibe. And now the rest of Vegas has kind of caught up with this style. And now the link feels a little outdated to me. I think they do need uh, to invest some money in these rooms. Or not. History might be doomed to repeat itself. The Imperial Palace w became kind of a joke uh, before Harris took it over and uh, rebranded into the link. So these are just my thoughts after my first night. I got two more nights. Whew. All right. I'm trying to be optimistic. I'm hoping I'm still going to have a really fun weekend on the strip this weekend. I'll check in later. Let's see what happens. So here's a quick little rundown about the link. If you've ever walked by it, if you have never been inside, it is extremely busy on the outside. The link promenade shops, the street that you can walk down between the Flamingo and the Link Hotel, is one of the busiest and most popular outdoor shopping centers on the Strip. It of course features the high roller Ferris wheel and the Flylink zip line, which takes you down the entire street there. And it is home to countless restaurants and attractions, Brooklyn Bowl, a great live music venue, slash bowling alley. Many of the restaurants that are advertised as being at the Link Hotel are actually outside in the promenade shops. They're famous for having the In-N-Out Burger, Yard House, and Jimmy Kimmel's Comedy Club is also there. So these are all technically attractions that you can find at the Link Hotel. Of course, inside there isn't as much. It is kind of a smaller casino on the inside. There is a secondary, even smaller casino on the inside, O'Shea's, which is actually used to be its own casino at the corner there where the Link Promenade shops currently are. It was knocked down to make way for the Link, so they continued having it, and it is inside the Link building now. As far as restaurants go, actually inside the building, there's a lot of counter service. Buddy Velastro has more than one quick service location with this various pizza and or cake businesses there, as well as a breakfast kind of quick service stand called Nook. There's also a Dunkin' Donuts. There is a wonderful uh, chain, Hash House A Go-Go, which has a location upstairs, but they are mainly open during the morning and brunch hours. Guy Fieri's Kitchen is kind of the main restaurant here. It's on the strip here. You can actually get patio seating. I ordered some takeout from there that I will show you later on in the video. They don't do room service, but they do have takeout that they will deliver to your room, and I took advantage of that during my stay. And of course, the opposite side of the building does face the Carnival Court adjacent to Harrah's. So there's great walking and uh, activities to do just outside of this hotel. You don't even have to leave this one block. This is Center Strip. It is one of the busiest, most popular parts of the Strip. Now the link is host to what I would consider two five-star must-see shows, Disco Show, as well as Matt Franco. Hit the subscribe button for this channel if you'd like to see my full length reviews of these shows. They are both excellent. They're both the two biggest reasons to come to the link in my opinion. As promised, let's take a look at what I ordered from Guy Fieri's kitchen and bar. Of course, Guy Fieri has several restaurants at many of the Caesars properties. This one is the Vegas Kitchen and Bar. 
A lot of his restaurants do feature many of the same menu items. You can usually get his trash can nachos and other items at most of his restaurants, regardless of what the title of the place is. Of course, you know me, I do keto, so I had to get a salad and some chicken wings, but they were very good. And it's good to see the presentation that you'll get if you order from your room. I thought I would include that here. It is slightly different, I feel, than if you just got takeout. So I'm showing you everything they set you up with here. You got the forks, the wet naps, the sauces. So it was a really good, I was really pleased with the offering for to go delivered to your room from this restaurant. Everything was high quality. It was a good meal. Okay, so this is my third and final night. First of all, I did get a follow-up, uh, not a real follow-up, but I did talk to an employee who told me that the valet parking situation, he said there, quote unquote, there is talk of them bringing back valet parking by the end of this year, by the end of 2024. I he specifically said December. Um, but he also said it's talk, that they're hoping that that happens. I've worked in this industry enough that there's there's always talk about things. Um, but so we'll wait to see if that happens. A um, Couple of pros, um, I did go to the front desk, so I mentioned that the phone in my room is not working. I wanted to have housekeeping come make up the room, uh, which was very nice, but I couldn't call them from my room to do that. There were also features on their television screen that said you could request housekeeping through the app on the screen. That wasn't working, said feature not available. I walked down to the front desk, told them about the phone not working, and requested uh, housekeeping. I went out to a show tonight. When I came back, not only had housekeeping come, did, did an amazing job, they fixed the phone. The phone, I don't know if it's a brand new phone or if they had to just plug something in. It's working just fine now. Nothing during my stay, of the things I don't like about this place, none of it has to do with the staff. Every staff member I've encountered has been great. So my stay here started off really rocky. I am really not in love with the vibe of things here. I don't love the casino here. I like the selection of machines in theory. They have a pretty good section of video poker, which is primarily what I play, and many casinos are kicking video poker to the curb. So I appreciate that Caesars does still cater to video poker players, but boy oh boy, uh, did uh, these machines were tight uh, here at the lake. I don't know how they do that. I know every casino does have the ability to adjust the percentage that they take out of those machines. This place, uh, it, it very much seems like the link doesn't expect their guests to gamble. So if you're an experienced Vegas tourist, a Vegas gambler, someone who chases comps and offers from the hotels, this place is just not for you. I really want to like it. I know that when I came here uh, prior to the pandemic, I had a great time and I liked it here. The location is great. Center Strip, across the street from Caesars Palace, right next door to Harrah's, Flamingo. You're connected to everything. you got the monorail here, which I love. So it's a great place to stay if you really want to get around it, even if you're not going to stay on property so much. You want to zip up and down on the monorail. Uh, it's a great spot. I just can't help but feel that Caesars is neglecting this property. They invested a ton of money into it a decade ago and they're not ready to invest anymore yet. So take that into consideration. You know, if uh, you can find a cheap deal on a room here, the room's gonna be fine. The bed was comfortable, the air conditioner works. I've got it running while I'm recording this, I realized halfway through. But there are a lot of scratches and dings. And I can't in good conscience tell you not to stay here. The room is fine. If you don't mind, maybe you like the vibe, the energy, the younger party crowd that's here to go to the day clubs and nightclubs. If you're one of them and you don't care about the hotel you're staying at, you want to get a hotel for the cheapest rate, it's just a place to stay, it's going to be clean, uh, so you can go off elsewhere and paint the town red, yeah, this is a fine place to stay. But if you are weighing your options and you are trying to find a really good 
resort for your one big trip to Vegas, I would uh, price things out and spend your money elsewhere.